All right, so the next step to our world domination of MIDI is learning how to record MIDI. Now, if we have a track, an instrument track, we can simply click the track and the red record arm button will turn on. That means that we can hear it if we play the keyboard. Now, if this is on, it doesn't mean we're recording right now, but it means we can record on this track. So, remember from a while ago, we set our record button to be R. If I push R, it will turn it into record and then I'll be able to uh, record whatever I want here. So let's give that a try right now. So now we have a little event and we can kind of see the notes I played here. Uh, and if I double click this event, now we're opening up a whole new view. Now this view is what we're gonna talk about in the next video, but just to show you, this, has been, this is what has been recorded. These are the actual notes I played. I'm gonna close this view now. So in a real scenario, you're probably gonna practice for a little bit before you record something. So I would find the sound I want, say it's the piano, and then I would determine maybe I wanna play Once I've got that going and I feel like I feel like I can play it well and that's what I want to record, then I'm going to push record. But the first thing we have to know is what tempo are we going to record in? Right now I'm down here at 120. How fast is 120? Well, we have to turn on our metronome to be able to hear that. Now the metronome, if you don't know, is just the thing that clicks so we can tell what tempo we're playing at. That's the little button down here, the little triangle button. I can also push C to turn it on and off. C stands for click in this case. It's also called a click track, but it's also called a metronome. So if I push play now, we hear this clicking and that's telling me what the speed of our track is. So if I wanted to play that part, now if I thought that was too slow, I could bring this up and try this. That's kind of more what I'm looking for. So to be able to record, we have to decide on our tempo first. Now, if we're using loops or something, that will probably determine the tempo for us, but we wanna be clear that we don't write our part ahead of time and then we're at the wrong tempo because it's not gonna work out well in the future as we see in the next video. Now, this little button I have down here is called the pre-count. This basically gives us a four clicks before we start recording. So if I wanted to record that part, I would push R, Notice it gave me one, two, three, four, start. So that's the way to do it. Let's listen to that again. That gives me a second to prepare my hands to record whatever, whatever I'm gonna record uh, and get them on the keyboard or my QWERTY keyboard. So all that does is take the tempo we're at and give us four clicks of it before we actually start recording. This is a very useful feature to have. We'll delete this now. And the last thing I want to mention about recording here is loop recording. So if I turn my loop on, I'll draw one out first. How about let's do it just one bar. And I turn it on with the slash key. Now, I can push record and it will continue recording in this loop. And I can keep adding to it as it records. Check this out. So that's how loop record works. When we're trying to work on a certain section of our song, I just put a loop around it, let it go, let it go while I'm practicing, and then when it goes to record, I can just record one little bit of it, wait till it comes around, record the next little bit of it, wait till it comes around. Now this works really well for drums a lot of the time. You might record one drum, and then as it comes around, you're gonna record the next drum, and the next drum. So there's a lot of ways to use this, but it's important to know that when you put record on when you have a loop, it will keep recording and it will layer those recordings on top of one another into the same event. 
All this is going to become very practical in a minute when we start doing our next task and you're going to have to use it all. But for now that's a good introduction to it and let's get on to the next one.